FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. One of the pieces that's up right now at Breitbart.com. I love this headline. Where is Rebecca Cleefish's phone call? Because we discussed the whole story of, of Sandra Fluck and the fabricated war on women. But there is a real war on women happening. In addition to the war on liberty and in addition to the war on the economy, Wisconsin's economy, for example. And so I encourage you to go check out this piece at Breitbart.com. And Michelle Malkin has written up uh, some good stuff as well. Because Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Cleefish, everyone knows who she is. Uh, she's under immense attack right now in Wisconsin from progressives who are absolutely angry at the reforms she, Governor Scott Walker, and other Republicans have instituted, which have saved Wisconsin a lot of money in the areas of health insurance and a number of other places as well. And it's, uh, you know, they're bringing back jobs. And joining us on the phone right now is Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Cleefish. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining me. Hi, Dana. How are you? I am doing well, and uh, I, I understand that you all definitely have been busy in in, in, in getting uh, in Wisconsin and getting some of these things, uh, some of these you know regulations and these these you know these big union salaries and everything else. Basically, giving the private sector, which is also working class, a place at the table. And I know you all have come under immense fire for this. How has it been up in Wisconsin? Because I know everyone paid attention over the summer, and then for whatever reason, some of the things slipped to the back burner, but it doesn't mean that it's still not ongoing. Well, here's the thing. You know, after the the protesters left the Capitol, and there are still some protesters milling around, banging on drums and carrying signs and whatnot, but after they left the Capitol, for the most part, they didn't just uh, go home and sit idly by. They went, and they started their own victory center, and they started protest petition drives in order to get Governor Walker and I on a recall ballot. Governor Walker and I are being recalled for doing our job, for doing what the taxpayers elected us to do in fall of 2010. The taxpayers said, hey, listen, we have dealt with the pinch of this horrible recession since 2008. You need to help us. You need to save us. You need to do a budget without raising taxes. Well, that was going to be really hard to do because the previous administration had left us a $3.6 billion, with be, dollar budget deficit. Right. So what did we do? We made some responsible decisions. We addressed our cost drivers. We opened Wisconsin for business so that unemployment was a real war we were fighting. And this, this recall, is what we're looking at facing for doing our jobs. Now, and one of the things that I've noted with this, too, and, and they've been very vicious in going after you, and in some ways, I dare say, even more so than uh, the way that they've gone after Governor Walker, uh, and I think it's just because progressives love conservative women so much, uh, but they, if, if, they were, if they would be successful in their recall efforts, I mean, you would be uh, the first, as I understand it, the first lieutenant governor in the history of the country to be recalled, especially for doing your job, and Commentary Magazine has a great layout of, act, of all of the benefits that Wisconsin has has reaped because of your actions. I mean, it discusses the savings for school districts, uh, the teachers union, uh, and, and the health insurance companies, and how savings averaged, you know, almost eight hundred thousand dollars in districts that switched to, uh, uh, you know, competitive bidding, so on and so forth. Uh, these, I mean, th- this, these are common sense reforms that you instituted, and it's saving schools money, it's saving taxpayers money. But the problem is, is it means less control for union bosses, and so now they're after you as a result what 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 is the what's the general sentiment and here's the thing they have put up the head of the state firefighters union against me oh already the international brotherhood of firefighters has filed with our government accountability board saying that they're going to do a big media buy they're going to make a big expenditure on behalf of their their guy who is a union boss in wisconsin and and listen we we love and respect our public employees in right. Wisconsin. It's just that we can't be in a position of saying our private sector workers are going to be the have-nots now, that our public sector right. workers, our union workers working for government are going to be the haves, and, and the rest of the middle class, yeah, well, you're going to just have to be the have-nots. We, we can't do that in Wisconsin. Government can't choose who gets to be the haves and who gets to be the have-nots. So you're right. We did some fiscally responsible things. 
And fundamental change, Dana, is, is never easy. No. It's never comfortable. But my husband is a member of the state legislature. I'm the lieutenant governor. We each made these pension contributions and health care contributions. We're a family who has two state employees as the heads of the household. Right. We are willing to make these sacrifices along with all of our other state employees because we know that our state, our kiddos are going to be better off. I have two little girls at home. I have a five-year-old and I have an eight-year-old. And how do I, as a parent, see this danger coming down the road, the, the same danger they're facing in Illinois, you know, with closing the schools mm-hmm. and, and the prisons and mass layoffs and still an unfunded pension system. Wisconsin's fully funded. Right. We're addressing our cost drivers. How do I look at my little girls and say, hey, listen, guys, I saw this danger coming down the road, but, you know, I just didn't love you quite enough to address it. Right. I loved my job and keeping it a little bit more. Well, and in the McIver Institute, a think tank up in Wisconsin, for those uh, who may not know, great, great uh, organization, and they do a lot of really good it reporting. Is. They they went into, I mean, they got into the weeds with exactly how much money this is saving uh, Wisconsin, the reforms that you instituted, and especially when it concerns the school districts, that for the first time they're actually able to manage districts without union interference. I mean, we're talking of hundreds of millions of dollars in savings. Now, if it's about the kids, then that right there is a big win for the kids, but it's not being viewed that way by no. the left. No, because they are spending big money on media buys in Wisconsin, and they're adapting things to their own message and their own opinions. But if we're not going to do this on emotion, if we're going to do this on facts, and that's how we make up our minds in right. Wisconsin, then you know, we win every time. Absolutely. Because the facts are on our side. Our state and local governments have saved $848 million. We have seen a tidal wave of savings across the state. For the first time in years, the property tax, the, the school tax part of our tax bill, they actually went down. You know, our unemployment rate is down, lowest it's been since 2008. Things are working, and they're saying, we want to move backwards. Yeah, it makes you know, no sense. Here's the thing. It's, it's backwards or forward. Our state motto is forward. The good thing here is if we're picking between backward and forward, it's the voters who get to choose. Right. Absolutely. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about this as well, because in, in terms of the way that the left is trying to uh, uh, have effect on you, obviously you're aware of the whole the Sandra Fluck uh, situation, sure. that whole story. Yeah. And everyone just was up in arms because a radio talk show host said that uh, Sandra Fluck's behavior was a certain <laughs> adjective. But I don't recall any of these same people being up in arms when there was a Wisconsin radio host that said <laughs> worse about you. And if people, I don't want to talk about it with you on air because it's so awful. People can look at Breitbart.com, but it's, I mean, they, this John Sylvester or whatever this guy's name is, uh, he wears a gold chain and he opens his shirt. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, I can't, but he, he's, well, he said worse of you. You didn't get a phone call, did you, from President Obama? And no, I, I didn't, shockingly, um, but these are things, I mean, this guy said some stuff that I told you I have two little girls. Yes. Someday they're going to have access to a computer and they're going to understand what Google is. Yes, sadly. I, I don't want them to find that gross stuff. I mean, he said really, really, really gross things. And you know what? Honestly, he apologized, Dana. And, and you know, I, I forgave him the moment the words came out of his mouth. But the fact is... There is something about conservative women that drives liberals absolutely nuts. It's because we, we protect our children in a, a different way. We, we believe different things, and they can't, they can't take ownership of us. You know, they, they think that women, moms, are a demographic that is somehow given to the Democrat Party, and I'm here to tell you it's just not true. You know, there are... There are hundreds of thousands of conservative moms out there who believe that their children's futures, their children's lives are more important than their own. And we will stop at nothing in order to make sure that our children have brighter futures than even the lives that we've been given. And, and we have great opportunity. Right. But here's the thing. 
we want to we want to make sure that the world of opportunity is even greater for our children. That's the that's the type of America that I want my kids growing up in, and that's why I decided to to run for this office in the beginning. This was my first ever political run. I had never run for political office before this, but there's a point at which you see our states and and our country's finances and future just being wrecked so badly that you can't sit and yell at your TV anymore. Right. You got to get in the game, and and so I am. The only bad part is that. You know, I, I'm underfunded, and they, they've already declared that they're going to pour in hundreds of thousands, millions of union dollars. There's an estimated $80 million being dumped on this race by outside special interests, the, the big union bosses. They look at and you as I a threat. can't go up against that. Yeah, they look at you are threatening them because you're effective. What can grassroots, what can it, people, period, do to help you and to help Wisconsin? Well, I, I would be so grateful if people stop by my website, RebeccaForReal.com. Uh, Governor Palin posted something on my race today on Facebook. You said that your website as well, on Breitbart, and Michelle Malkin, you mentioned that. You know, people are, are taking notice that, you know, we can't leave a man on the field here. We are being recalled separately. Even though the governor and I were elected together, we're being recalled separately, which means I am in danger and I need help. We cannot have the head of the firefighters union in the lieutenant governor's office and our great governor, Scott Walker, trying to go out there and do battle against special interests every day and keep Wisconsin open for business. Right. We'd have a, we'd have a nightly debate on the news about which is the better way to go, fiscal responsibility or the failed policies of the past? We can't have some some character using the lieutenant governor's office to butt heads with Scott Walker every day. Scott Walker is going to take us into the future here in Wisconsin. He's done it already. We've acknowledged it. The reforms are working. You can see it all over the place. Now we need to keep going. Absolutely. Well, I know I'm going to be up in Madison, and I hope to meet you up there. I'm going to be up there uh, April 14th, I think is the date. That's Saturday for a uh, rally. So I look forward to meeting you. And any way that we can help Wisconsin and, and help you and, and stop, because the reforms are working. We, Like you said, you can't take a step back. You just can't take a hey, step back. You you are absolutely right. And so if, if folks would would have a moment to, to drop by RebeccaForReal.com and help me out, I will continue to fight in Wisconsin. Well, thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Cleefish. Thank you for standing strong, and you have a ton of people standing right behind you. So keep it up. Thank you so much, right, Take care. Thank you.